define shipping networks as the name suggests in this step we are going to define shipping networks in inventory so that you can define a from organization and destination organization from where the goods goes from one origin to destination the from and to relation between two organizations can be direct or in transit and there are associated accounting entries and set of options which have to be given at the time of setting up this one so let's go into oracle applications to understand this more so in order to define shipping networks you go to inventory responsibility and then navigate to setup organizations and then shipping networks and then hit the open button and here what I'm going to do instead of finding a new one I'm going to take an existing one so at present the organization is defaulting to v1 if you wish to change that you can simply go to this list of values and choose from an existing inventory organization so let's leave it as it is and the shipping networks which are defined already if you wish to find out those then you simply hit the find button and here it has uh, picked up so presently there is a shipping networks defined from M2 organization to V1 so M2 is a acronym given to organization Boston manufacturing and V1 is for vision operations now this is a direct type of transfer and as you could see there are multiple tabs in which you can give more options in relation to this one so if you wish to see all of these options within one form then you can simply hit the open button and it will show you all those options within one form format so as you could see the first two fields are displayed over here the next one is transfer type as I was explaining you in the beginning of the video there are two types of transfers one is a direct so wherein you have a direct relationship there is no stop in between and in transit is a one wherein some stoppage happens in between or some transfer of ownership happens in between for example uh, you send the shipments from origin organization via truck to a seaport and from seaport the ownership of the shipment gets transferred from the trucked logistics provider to shipment company and then after the shipment gets delivered to the destination port again the um, transfer of ownership happens to the next transporter it could be a truck or it could be any other means so that's where you provide something called as in transit shipment okay and the moment you do that the disabled fields which are there like indirect these were disabled it gets enabled automatically so FOB which stands for uh, freight on board or free on board you have got several options out there one is a receipt and one is a shipment so what is meant by FOB freight on board is who takes the responsibility of the freight on board and uh, in this case the responsibility of uh, the origin organization is there until the receipt of the goods if it is shipment then the origin organization responsibility is until the shipment onto their warehouse but the moment it leaves their warehouse their responsibility gets over okay and then you have got something called as a receipt routing this is a standard receiving feature wherein you've got three kinds of receipt routing standard inspection and direct the direct one is the receipts are not inspected as soon as the shipment comes into the warehouse it directly goes uh, into the stock locations so for example if uh, computers are sent in a truck to a destination organization the moment it reaches without any inspection the destination organization takes the uh, cartons of computer boxes and then they transfer onto their warehouse that's called as a direct receipt routing standard is the one wherein uh, you've got inspection as well as 
uh, acceptance so it's it's a three steps process one the first step is the goods arrive at the dock the second is it is inspected and then upon inspection it has to be accepted so these three steps gets marked onto the system whereas inspection is a two step process wherein simply one thing happens that inspection takes place so it's a two step process one is the goods first arrives at the warehouse facility then they are inspected and sent to the final warehouse location so you've got to choose from one of them and then you can specify whether an internal order is required for these goods for example as soon as you raise an internal requisition you wish to have an internal order raised in vision operations so if you raise an internal requisition in boston manufacturing for computer cpu then uh, you wish to have a internal sales order in vision operations so if you wish to have that setting then you've got to enable this internal orders required one and if you set this up then the system must create a internal sales order or you must create one unless that happens you will not be able to proceed further in the workflow and then you've got couple of other options elementary visibility enabled manual receipt at expense destination so whether you wish to have a manual receipt at the expense destination and you wish to enter the receipt number manually and to give your acceptance criteria then you've got inter organization transfer charge so uh, there are few options over here is one is predefined transfer charge whatever is predefined transfer charge is then you add 10% on top of that so that's going to be a transfer charge or if it is requested or requested value so one is a percentage and one is a lump sum amount or no transfer charge at all then the next setting over here is inter organization distance so if there is a distance between two organization then you enter it over here for example the distance unit of measure you have to provide kilometers or miles and so on and then you give a value of that for example between m1 and v1 there is a 10 kilometer distance so you give the uom as km and the value you provide as 10 then you've got several accounts combinations you must provide it over here and this is used to generate intercompany accounting as well as the intercompany invoices so first thing you've got is transfer credit then you've got purchase price variance for example if the purchase goods in m2 is costing let's say 500 dollar per computer cpu and by the time it reaches v1 the price in the market price goes up to let's say 510 per cpu so there will be a purchase price variance and where does that variance goes and sits into that will hit this particular account then you've got a receivables account payables account and in transit inventory account so what is in transit inventory so as i was explaining over here if you give a transfer type of in transit then the value of the goods will be moving in relation to the account given over here so value as well as the ownership of the goods i would say so if while the goods are in in transit location then uh, the ownership of the goods will be with a specific party it could be a logistics provider or it could be a third party company and the account that would be hit for in transit inventory valuation will be this one then there are several other options i guess uh, the important option is transfer price over here so you provide the price list over here and um, this price list is specifically made for intercompany orders so the prices that would be given over the, uh, there would be taken in the intercompany orders price list so if you wish to read more about these options then you feel free to refer to inventory user guide wherein each and every option would be explained in more detail